Hi there. This is image 18 in the series of Intraoral Radiographic Interpretation for the D3 students enrolled at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. In this video, we are going to identify radiographic features of osteoma cutis and differentiate it from flibolates. We have two intraoral radiographs, a bite wing and a mandibular left molar periapical radiograph. Unfortunately, both the radiographs have some cone cuts. These cone cuts are not preventing us from observing the circular or oval radiopacity. On the bite wing radiograph, this radiopacity appears to be in contact with the alveolar crest. However, on the periapical radiograph taken on the same day, we do not even see the radiopacity. So we can conclude that this radiopacity is not in the alveolar mucosa or not in contact with the alveolar crest. Obviously, this radiopacity was on the path of the X-ray beam during the bite wing radiography. We see that the radiographic features are a circular or oval, well-defined radiopacity with smooth outer border. The outer border is little denser than the inner part. We also have a panoramic radiograph. Let's review that. On this cropped panoramic radiograph, we can still identify the oval radiopacity. This time, this radiopacity is a few millimeters away from the alveolar crest. So from this observation, we can conclude that this is on the soft tissues and the position changes with different kinds of radiographic exposure. So this is an osteoma cutis. So what are the features of an osteoma cutis? Most commonly, the osteoma cutis is in the cheek or on the lip. It can also be in the tongue. An osteoma in the tongue is called osteoma mucosae. The cutis are more superficial while the mucosal osteoma are deep in the tissues. As we saw, the shape of the mass is circular or oval. The border is smooth, well-defined and thick. The size varies. It can be very small or a centimeter or even two centimeters in size. The density could be mostly homogeneous or similar to a donut with an outer ring. Osteoma cutis can be two types. The primary osteoma cutis occurs in normal tissues. The secondary osteoma cutis occurs in damaged or diseased tissues, commonly in areas of calcified acne. A vast majority of osteoma cutis, almost 85%, is the secondary type. As the name states, osteoma cutis is bone formation in the skin. As the bone forms superficially on the skin, the skin color may change. Clinically, these may appear as solitary firm papules sometimes as multiple papules or in some cases even as large plaques. Most of the osteoma cutis originate from inflammatory conditions. Even after the inflammatory condition has subsided, the osteoma cutis may persist for years. Osteoma cutis may happen at any age. There are no gender or race predominance. These are other examples of osteoma cutis. Same patient, right and left cheek, and these are the areas of osteoma cutis. And you can appreciate that these are donut shaped radiopacities, well defined outer margin and less dense inner. Here are some, and this one has more of a donut shape. Let's review example of osteoma cutis in CBCT scans. Osteoma cutis can be very faint. Let me go slowly over multiple osteoma cutis. The left image is an axial view at the level of the mandibular symphysis. The right image is a sagittal view at the midline of the mandible. You can appreciate that these ossifications are very superficial at the level of the skin. These radiopacities, these radiopacities are not osteoma cutis. These are flibolates, calcifications in old thrombus or veins. These have shapes of bull's eye and this is probably a good example. An outer radiopaque ring with a central core of radiopacity. It should not be difficult to differentiate an osteoma cutis from a flibolate. 
both radiographically as well as clinically. For further studies about osteomyocutis, I recommend that you study these papers. Thank you very much. Please join me again on another radiographic interpretation video.